In this video, we're going to look at a modification to the Clapeyron equation from the previous video to account for the fact that the molar volume of gases can change a lot as a function of temperature and pressure, and the result will be the clausius clapeyron equation. So as I said, our previously derived Clapeyron equation shows that the change of the pressure with respect to temperature along a coexistence curve is equal to the tr molar transition enthalpy divided by the temperature times molar transition volume uh, along uh, between those two given phases there, whether that be solid liquid, liquid gas, or solid gas. So the transition volume is just the difference between volume of the two, molar volume of the two phases. Transition enthalpy is the heat it takes to go from one phase to another. And as I said, this assumes that your transition volume is constant as a function of both pressure and temperature along your phase diagram. So if we look at the solid, or if we look at the liquid vapor coexistence curve, for example, and we apply this equation, we would have dP dt, that derivative of the coexistence curve of its pressure with respect to temperature, would be equal to the molar vaporization enthalpy. Vaporization, the process of going from a, a liquid to a gas, times the temperature, and then times the transition volume, which would be the molar volume of the gas, minus the molar volume of the liquid. So we know from kind of intuition and also some previous experience that the molar volume of a gas is usually much, much larger than the molar volume of a liquid. Gas will expand to take up whatever container it is held in, whereas liquid generally stays within a well-defined region for what its molar volume is. The density of liquids doesn't change very much with respect to temperature and pressure, whereas the volume of molar volume of gas has changed a lot and is often several orders of magnitude larger. So this means because our molar volume of our gas is much, much greater than the molar volume of our liquid, that we can assume that we can neglect this term relative to the size of the molar volume of the gas. So we're going to set that equal to zero, and we're just going to neglect this term because it's a small perturbation relative to the molar volume of the gas. And then we know that for ideal gas, that PV equals nRT, so PV bar of the gas equals RT, molar volume equals RT. So our molar volume of our gas is RT over the pressure. So we're going to substitute the fact that V bar G is RT over P into this equation here. And you should be able to convince yourself once we do some rearranging there that what we will end up with is this equation. We're going to have 1 over P dP dt equals the molar vaporization enthalpy, molar enthalpy of vaporization, divided by RT squared. So this just comes from substituting this in. You're going to then divide both sides by pressure and get this kind of form that we have there. Now from here, we can simplify uh, the left side of the equation here. If we have a situation where we have 1 over x times, say, dx dt, this is equal to the derivative of the natural log of x with respect to t as well. Because by the chain rule, this will be the derivative of the log of x, which is 1 over x, times dx dt. So that'll be 1 over x dx dt. So we can replace this 1 over p dp dt as a d log of p dt. And that's what we're going to do. So with that, we're going to have d ln p, well, d ln p dt equals molar vaporization enthalpy divided by rt squared. And now the nice part about this equation is we can integrate both sides of these, this equation here. So we're going to multiply both sides by dt. We're going to get d ln p 
equals delta vap h bar over r times dt over t squared. Then we can integrate both sides. Integrate this side, integral of d ln p is just ln p, or ln p final over p initial. Well, let's say p2 and p1 here, perhaps. And we can integrate this side with respect to t. Uh, the delta, the enthalpy of vaporization and r, we're going to assume that those, well, r doesn't vary with temperature, and we're going to assume that the enthalpy of vaporization doesn't either. So we're going to integrate that from t1 to t2. And if you do the integrals on both sides of that equation, what you're going to end up with is the following equation. We're going to have the log, natural log of P2 over P1, very simple integral on this side, equals minus molar enthalpy of vaporization over the gas constant R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over t1. This integral of dt over t squared gives you minus 1 over t evaluated at the final and initial temperature. So you get 1 over t2 minus t1 over t1 with a minus sign. And this result here is the clausius clapiron equation. And what this is really useful for is if we know the vapor pressure of a substance, so how much, uh, what's the equilibrium pressure of gas which is exerted at a given temperature for that substance from the liquid. The, we can, if we know the vapor pressure at one pressure and one temperature, then we can calculate what that vapor pressure is at another temperature. And also if we know the enthalpy of vaporization. Okay, so to summarize what I just said there, Let's go ahead and write that down. So if we're given the enthalpy of vaporization, which is just how much heat it takes to take, say, a mole of substance from the liquid to the gas phase, what, what is the heat which occurs during that process at the boiling temperature, at the temperature of vaporization. So if you're given that and the vapor pressure, so vapor pressure of a substance at one temperature, say at T1, then we can calculate the vapor pressure at another temperature. So if we're given P1 here, then we can, if we're given P1 at T1, then we can calculate P2 at T2, because we know that there is a linear relationship between the log of the pressures and the inverse of the temperatures, with the slope here being the negative enthalpy of vaporization divided by the gas constant. And the vaporization, uh, the vapor pressure, um, we're not completely in the dark here about what that is because if we have, for example, the normal boiling point or the standard boiling point, standard boiling point being the boiling point at, uh, at one atmos, standard being the boiling point at one bar, So standard boiling point is at one bar of pressure and the normal boiling point is at one atmosphere of pressure. So note the difference between those two there. The boiling point is defined as the point where the vapor pressure of a gas equals the atmospheric pressure. So if we, if we know the say standard boiling point of a substance, we know that the vapor pressure of that substance at that temperature is one bar. So we have kind of ways of knowing approximately what these vapor pressures are if we know what the standard or normal boiling points are. And then this is, this is correct over a broader range of temperatures than just the Clapeyron equation itself because this is essentially a first order Taylor series. And this is a this is a more advanced function because it takes into account the changing molar volume of a gas as a function of temperature and pressure. And of course it still has its limitations because it's still assuming that the gas is ideal and it's going to behave ideally over this temperature. And if we wanted to make more corrections to make this more accurate we could, 
but this is a pretty good starting first guess for how this vapor pressure varies as a function of temperature.